Hi, this is Jeremy Franklin, teaching BIM 101 for the International Academy of Design and Technology. In this video, I want to go over the components of the interface of AutoCAD and do some basic customization of that interface to make it easier for new users. When AutoCAD first installs, it installs with some default settings, and we'll talk about how to change some of those to make it a little bit easier to learn. But before we get to that, uh, let's talk about some of the basic components of the interface that you can see when you start your AutoCAD program. Keep in mind that the interface has changed a lot over the years. AutoCAD has been around since about 1982. And every couple of years they've made some modifications to the interface. So if you compare it to a version from two or three years ago, uh, it does look considerably different in some ways. Some things, however, have stayed relatively close to the same. Uh, for example, the main drawing area, which typically is black or dark gray, is where you do most of your drawing. Now at the bottom, below the drawing area, you have the command prompt or the command line. And that's one of the most important parts of the interface as you get into using AutoCAD. And I'll be referring to that a lot uh, as you're using commands and tools in order to um, keep track of the steps of the commands that you're learning and in order to know um, what to do next. And AutoCAD will give you information back as well at the command line at the bottom. Now at the top of the interface, you have what is known as the ribbon. Autodesk, as the manufacturer of AutoCAD, is kind of followed in the footsteps of Microsoft uh, where they have their office suite with the ribbon uh, that organizes your tools kind of into groups and then puts them on various tabs at the top. You can see I have home, insert, annotate, etc. as various tabs within AutoCAD's interface. Each of those tabs is made up of a panel. You can see at the bottom there are words like draw, modify, layers, annotation, etc. So each of those is a panel within each tab. That's how you'll get to a lot of your commands and uh, so we'll get to the details of those tools a little later. Now right above the ribbon and its tabs you have a small row of icons and that's called a quick access toolbar. Very handy to get to some of the most commonly used things like save, open, print, undo, uh, commands like that that are uh, kind of core commands for most Windows based programs. Now the quick access toolbar is kind of taking over a small part of the title bar uh, that is also typical for most Windows programs. It shows you the name of the software that you're using, the name of the current file you're in, and then at the uh, right end also has access to the help menu. Uh, you'll notice you can type in a keyword or a phrase in the white box in order to uh, get help about it. Or you can click on the small arrow next to the question mark and that will pull down with help or new features um, about AutoCAD to see which version you're using, etc. Obviously at the far upper right you have close for the program, minimize of the program, etc. Notice you also have close and minimize at the drawing area so that will minimize or close the individual CAD file that you currently have open within the overall program. So you do have the ability to have multiple CAD files open and switch back and forth. And we'll get into that a little bit more later on. Um, the only uh, pull down menu that is really remaining in AutoCAD in as far as the default setup goes is the large A at the upper left corner. That kind of replaces the file pull down menu where you have access to new, open, save, print, close, and uh, some other basic commands. It's kind of as two columns, so if you hover over, uh, let's say, um, open, then it shows you types of things you can open. Or if you hover over print, it shows you options related to print. So the right side kind of changes uh, depending on what you're uh, hovering over on the left-hand column. So that's your basic file pull down is that large A. It is possible to reset AutoCAD back to a more traditional layout, um, but the way that AutoCAD or Autodesk really, being the manufacturer, they're kind of directing most people um, toward the ribbon. It's probably good to kind of get used to it, to be honest. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of it originally, 
still not really a big fan, to be honest, but um, I'm getting used to it a little bit because uh, it can be a pain to reset every time you get a new version to change it back to the old version over and over again. Now, um, a few other comments about the ribbon. It is highly customizable. Really, everything in AutoCAD is very customizable, and that's one of the best things about it. You can move panels around, hide panels, um, make your own panels. Um, I won't get into a lot of that at this point, but one thing that I do think is important to touch on is it has options for the configuration uh, as far as how much space it takes up and how it's going to behave on a, on a daily usage basis. So next to the tabs, you know, again, home, insert, annotate, etc. At the very end of that row, you'll see a small gray icon with a black arrow. And then uh, there's another little arrow to the right of that. So the black uh, arrow in the gray icon will toggle you between several different modes that the ribbon can be used. So I just clicked on that once. And it switches to um, these large chunky icons. When you hover over any one of them, then it flies out with the various tools underneath that panel. So the advantage to this is it's not taking up quite as much drawing area. The disadvantage is you may not know where all your tools are until you kind of get used to the interface a little. So it's a little bit slower to find things if you don't know where your commands are. Clicking on that arrow again will cycle you again to a different mode where it takes up even less space. Now all you see are the words, draw, modify, layers, etc. Again, you hover and it flies out with your various tools on each panel. And there's one more mode, and that is fully retracted back. Now you have to actually go up and click on the tab that you want, such as home. And when you do, it flies out with all the panels in order to find your tools. And then when you move your mouse away, it automatically retracts back. Obviously, this takes up the least amount of drawing space. But again, it's a little bit more difficult yet in order to find the commands if you're not familiar with the interface. And one more click on that icon will take you back to where you started. So it will cycle between those different modes. So usually you kind of start out with it fully expanded until you kind of get used to where things are. And then you may choose to make it retracted to give yourself a little bit more drawing area. Uh, the small icon or the small arrow to the right of the icon allows you to go directly to one of those modes if that's quicker because uh, you may know specifically which one you want to go to. You also do have the option to hide specific tabs or panels. You can do that by right clicking either in a blank area of the ribbon or anywhere on the ribbon itself and then going to show tabs and then you can uncheck any of the ones that you want to hide or obviously if there's one not showing up that you do want then you would place a check mark next to it and then it will be exposed again or show panels. So again tabs are the main categories at the top Panels are the subcategories underneath that, so you can hide any that you specifically don't use. If you're just learning now, probably good to just leave them all on until you kind of get a feel for which ones you're going to use and which ones you won't. Now at the bottom, you have some uh, very important buttons as well. Uh, the row of icons that are half blue, half gray um, on the very bottom left are your drawing aid things uh, like ortho, object snap, etc. These will be very um, important as we get into drawing tools. I call them drawing aids because they're going to help you to be accurate essentially. Most of the time though it's hard to get used to these while they're icons because you're not really sure which one's which and you don't really learn the right terms. So I usually suggest if you right click on any of those icons and then click on the word use icons that turns the icons off to where you can actually see the names. This is usually a little easier to learn for most people because when you're looking for a certain one, now you can go down and just look for the name. You don't have to try to remember which picture it is. So those are the basic parts of the interface. Uh, there's some more customization that we'll do in the next segment.